One usually doesn't think of nature when thinking of Vegas. It's like an escape where inhibitions can be thrown into the wind. But with little effort, nature can be found around any corner. An escape from the escape. I've been coming here the majority of my life since most of my family moved to Vegas in the mid-90s. It's my second home. But one thing I've never done while in town is backpack. So I found this cool loop from Mud Springs to Max Canyon Road, about 45 minutes away from the Strip near Mount Charleston. And to be honest, I really needed this. I've been feeling pretty down on the dumps lately. I haven't backpacked in six months, went through a breakup, I stopped posting for my channel, caught COVID, which destroyed my lungs, and haven't been too active at all. I felt this resistance to be creative and put myself out there. So that's exactly what I had to do. I've been seeing a lot of this tree around and I definitely know what this is. This is a juniper and look at the bark. It's so nice. It's actually perfect for starting fires. So I might get some later, but I've just been seeing them around. I'm not surprised too that they're here because junipers love dry, arid climates. And you can tell it's a juniper because of its leaves that it has here. One thing is that junipers can sometimes be confused with cedars. One way I can tell the difference between a juniper and a cedar is that cedars have flat needles and they kind of fan out. These m look more like coral, like a coral reef. And also they have these little berries, right? These are called juniper berries. And if you crush it, it has a very floral scent to it. And it's actually what they use to flavor gin. So if you actually crush this, you, you can almost taste the gin if you close your eyes and have a good imagination. I love these trees because these trees are used a lot in bonsai making. I'm actually gonna have a bonsai episode come out. I don't know if that's gonna be out before this episode or it's gonna be after, but I'll put a link to it. But junipers are always a good find. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurry and to cut my teeth. I can take what I need to get by. It doesn't make it easy. That was quite the uphill for me. I think it's the elevation accompanied with my COVID lungs that is making this really difficult. The pack weight is pretty heavy too, but I guess it's kind of expected. I don't know, to be honest, I thought I'd be doing a little better, but it is what it is, right? I'm not as in shape as I used to be, but you know what? That's exactly where I need to be because now I need to push myself. I feel like I haven't really pushed myself physically in quite some time to like be super fit, but look, I think now it's a perfect time because I actually want to do some cool stuff again. And you know what? You can't really beat this. Look, I'm by myself on this beautiful road next to these beautiful trees. And I think I'm coming over this like cliff looking thing where I could look down at the desert and the valley. Oh my God, so pretty, jeez. Look at that. Vegas is gonna be over there in that direction. So I finally made it to my site. I'm only about a few hundred feet from the Forest Service Road and someone already made a fire pit for me so I don't have to do one, which is all good. And also they left me some 
firewood. So I get to process that. I brought my saw. It makes my life a whole lot easier. I noticed they used a, a pallet. So they probably drove that in. It's still kind of crazy to do. First thing I'm gonna do to set up camp is set up my tent. Then I'm gonna start worrying about my wood. It's gonna get down to 35 degrees tonight from what I hear. But the thing is, I don't need too much wood. Uh, I guess here's some fire safety 101. This fire ring is kind of close to some trees. So we don't want a big fire. So first things first, set up my tent and then I'll start worrying about the wood. Now it's important to know when you're collecting wood here, you can't cut down dead standing trees. So the wood have to be already on the ground. And it seems like these people already picked up this wood for me, so all I'm gonna do is just cut them up. And cutting up wood and processing wood is one of my favorite parts. All right, so I got all the wood done. The largest ones I put over here, medium size over here, smaller ones here, and then the tiny little tender ones are right here. Two things, I'm gonna use this ferro rod. One thing that I forgot was my Mora knife and it has a 90 degree spine and that shoots off sparks. I do have my saw. It does feel like a 90 degree spine right here. I do have dryer lint and I use dryer lint to catch the spark and that's one of my favorite ways. But I'm really curious about this juniper. It reminds me so much of cedar. What we do with cedar is you just take your knife and then you rub it back and forth. It basically creates almost like a sawdust and that will collect the spark. I've never done it with juniper. So hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, then oh well, you know, I got my lint, but I'm excited to see if it works. So, We'll make kind of like a hut. Okay, should be good. Here's that piece of juniper. All right, let's give that a shot. Gonna get my saw and we'll see if this works. When I say 90 degree spine, that means that the top is completely flat. It's not sharp enough to cut you, but you could definitely feel it. Catching a little bit, but it's not holding. Here we go. Is it gonna stay? Nope. Maybe juniper bark is not the best. I don't think that's gonna work. All right, let's see if the lint works. What I'm gonna do is move this towards the end. This might take a while. Or not. Now, we just gotta ensure that these smaller branches catch on fire first. Very delicate, come on now. Uh-oh, that is not good. So what that tells me is, this might be a little bit more wet than I think. Oh, what to do? Another thing is I don't think I added enough of these smaller bits. So I'm gonna have to collect more wood. All right, I'll come back. All right, what I've done is I added more little pieces of kindling and made it a little larger. I have another piece of lint. I'm gonna try it again. This is what camping's about, pushing yourself and knowing that not everything's gonna work out the first time. This is a lot easier with my knife, creating sparks. I feel like I have more control. Now, if you think about what dry lint is, it's small pieces of your clothes, which usually is gonna be cotton, and it works perfectly to catch a spark. But sometimes it's not good, and that's if you, let's say, wash it with polyester. Now, polyester is plastic. It's not gonna be able to pick up a spark like cotton. And I fear that this dry lint that I have, unlike the first one, has a lot of polyester. Because I do, I have seen a few sparks land on it, and it didn't catch fire. Like that, okay, there we go. Gotta catch a bit, just relax. Okay. All right, 
we're not out of it yet. Okay. This part is very, very delicate. We want to make sure all the little pieces catch on fire and then we slowly progress to larger pieces of wood. Now I do have this trusty pocket bellows. Just feed it oxygen. I love this thing. Just keep on building it. Try not to smother it. And I think I have a handle on that. That's enough for me to work with. Now we could use a little bit larger pieces of wood. And I don't think we have to fret so much anymore. All right. Good job, Johnny. So I finally got the fire going. It's eating up all the bigger sticks now and feels warm, feels good. But I think uh, that whole experience just trying out the juniper bark, figuring out it didn't work, and it may work in other circumstances. Maybe that bark was wet. Um, maybe I just did something wrong. But you know, I definitely wanted to keep that in and show you guys that even if I use a method that I am comfortable with, like the dryer link, it still might not work. And the first time, it didn't work, right? It only started working on, on the second time. But um, why I wanna keep that in is to show, like my goal for this channel is to have people go out and go backpacking, go camping and push themselves out in nature and connect with nature. Uh, but I don't wanna give an image that I'm like perfect. You know, that I, just because I've been camping for years now that nothing goes wrong. If anything, you guys need to see what happens if it does go wrong. I don't have a lighter, so <laughs> I mean, this had to work, you know, or else I wouldn't have a fire. I'm really happy it did, but I'm glad you got to see that whole experience because you were able to understand like my thought process. Okay, how can I actually make this work? How, what, what should I do? What went wrong? And kind of just analyze the situation. And if you go camping, you'll find yourself in that situation as well. I used to be a manager at Starbucks, and uh, I used to tell my baristas this all the time, is that good judgment comes from experience, but experience comes from bad judgment. So you have to have a, a resume of bad judgment before you know how to start making good judgments. And that's really what experience is. So the more bad judgments you have, the better you become. So I don't see that first fire as a failure. If anything, it's just making me better. And I think that's the mindset you should have when you come out here. You know, it's okay to fail. If anything, it's required. Ah. <sighs> All right, well, I think it's time for me to get up and get moving. I don't want to hit the trail too late. So everything seems to be a breeze right now. I've been, well, aside from the one uphill that I had to climb, I'm hiking on this dry riverbed and there's a bunch of gravel and everything and it seems to just be going downhill the whole time. So <coughs> I'm speeding through this. It's actually really nice. There's no one here. Honestly, there isn't even any birds. It's eerily silent over here. A nice change of pace too from the road. Well, I left the dry riverbed and I'm starting to climb. Man, it's getting hot. It wasn't this hot yesterday. As I was hiking along, I saw this dead pinion pine here, and I noticed it had these like little brown tassel things growing out. Under further inspection, 
you could actually see that it's a different species. And this is actually a mistletoe. Mistletoes are a parasitic plant and parasites need a host to survive. So these rely on trees, I think uh, bushes as well. They produce like this little berry that birds love and birds will come and eat that berry. As they eat the berries, the seeds stay intact in their digestive system. So what will happen is they'll fly onto another tree and then they'll poop out the seeds on the branch. And then from the seeds grow more mistletoes. Now they are parasitic. That means they're, they're taking the energy from the plant, the water from the plant and the, the sugars from the plant. And eventually the plant ends up dying. I can't say that this plant died because of the mistletoe, but it didn't help it survive. All right, I'm taking a break. I've hiked seven miles. What's nice is I, I literally haven't seen a single soul. I've been the only person here. Uh, and it's nice, you know, I could take a break whenever I want to. I could stop when I want to. I could eat when I want to. To worry about anyone else. Not to say that my life at home sucks, but everyone try to spend some time by themselves out in nature. You know, even if you live in the city, if you live in a place like Vegas where you live in the desert and like, oh, there's no trees around here. Of course there are. You know, you just have to be resourceful and find it. And this place is only 50 minutes outside of town. You know, when I'm hiking by myself, I come up with all these ideas and, and I notice things and I noticed I'm starting to see more desert like plants so right now I'm hiking away from the mountain towards the desert I'm finding like this cool bush like it's very wispy kind of looks like a paintbrush it's got little thin leaves um, I have no idea what it is I'll have to look it up you know you'd be hard-pressed to find any broad leaves in the desert and the reason is because of surface area now let's think about it why would a leaf want to be broad in the first place well because it could get more sunlight and plants need sunlight for photosynthesis you would think that they would want some broad leaves but the problem is the water. The wider the leaf, the more surface area it has. Therefore, the more area it has to lose water. And water is a high ticket commodity over here in the desert. You don't wanna lose water. So what do plants do? Plants evolve their leaves to be smaller, thinner, round, all these things to reduce their surface area, like this pinion pine behind me, or junipers, or that weird wispy thing that I saw. These are all evolutionary tactics to conserve water. See, plants are cool. All right guys, I made it back to the Prius. That was actually a really cool hike. Short, sweet, a lot of biology, a lot of cool plants, and I'm glad I got to share that with you. Anyways, thanks for coming along with me, and most of all, I hope you learned something. I'm the Backpacking Biologist, and I'll catch you next time. Love you guys.